What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the sequel of RA, that is RA2, that is a part of the Wind Corp series and try hacking. Alright, let's look at the story and jump straight into it. Sorry to have it up spinning. I'll copy the IP address and the stories that we recently had a security breach. Since they have, they've hardened their infrastructure, learning from their mistakes, but maybe not enough. You have managed to enter their local network. Happy hacking. So we don't have that much information. Let's just jump straight into it and see what we're dealing with. So I already ran my scans, full port scan, and a lot came back just like last time. There's DNS, there's port 80 open. We have SMB, there's LDAP, LDAP secure. As you scroll down, there's an SSL site. That is the fire.wincorp.thm. So we're going to have to add these to our Etsy hosts. There's a ton of stuff open. We could try enumerate some open shares that we may have available to us anonymously without any credentials, but that's not going to take us anywhere since there aren't any. So let me copy the IP address and we'll add this to our Etsy hosts. And I have to open that as sudo. I always make that mistake. Okay, there we are. I will just paste the IP address. So what we're going to have to add to our SEO is the fire.wincrop.thm. I already have the main domain that is wincrop.thm added. This is self-service.wincrop.thm. And then there is the self-service.dev.wincrop.thm. You can find those in your Nmap scan. And so you can save that out exit from this tab and we will go visit the web server all right it is on port 443 let's see what they gave us okay and as you can see there's already a potential security risk so we know that something is wrong with their certificates straight off the bat and it says welcome to our company portal Okay, we feel welcome. Let me just make that a tad bit bigger. And we have a message from the management team. This wasn't here last time. This is after the last breach, we decided to implement new secu security controls. No more unsecure communication. We will be using certificates everywhere. That's interesting. We are developing a new and secure self-service portal to assist our employees more securely. We are no longer using unsafe IM software and we are running on state of the art operating systems. That are secure out of the box. That probably means they have misconfigurations because things that come straight out of the box usually have misconfigurations and we can abuse that. We believe that we have made the right choice and so bold to say that we are now unhackable. I mean, they did say that last time. Okay, let's continue down the web page. As you can see, none of the employees are online. Hemo is away. Most of it looks the same, still the same employees. In focus, Emily, Lily, and Kirk, and just his social media and a couple of other pages. So, since we have two other subdomains, we can try visit those and see where they get us. And so, I'll just copy that. That's the first one, self service. Accept the risk and continue. And it seems we need credentials. We can try the good old admin admin, see if that works. It did not. Admin password. You can try brute force this, but you're probably not going to get anywhere. Unless you're patient though. Then it might work unless it locks you out. So we need credentials for this. We can come back to that later. And so let's go on to the next subdomain. Paste that in and see what the development site has for us. Development sites are always juicy and it says under construction work in progress. So since there's nothing here and it seems this, we can try this out first and see where it takes us. Okay, it takes us to this self-service and we need credentials for that. So since there's nothing that seems to be interesting on the web pages, we could try directory busting and I can tell you 
my scans ran for a while but i did come up with something so on this website you will find a partial directory but we're gonna need credentials to enter this right and so we can do a bit more enumeration see what we can find if we can find any user and password we could try throw this here and see where it takes us and hopefully we'll have powershell web access and we can run commands from the web and if you do your directory busting on this website you're not going to get anything but on this one there is a slash backup directory and as you can see there's a cert.pfx and a web config so you can try we could download this let us actually download this if we can we could download this as well but there's nothing here so that's a dead end so we can try to take a look at uh, the cert.pfx but firstly uh let us look at what a pfx file is okay how to create a pfx file extracting cert and keys okay slow wi-fi shame the pfx file which is a pkcs pound 12 format contains the ssl certificate public keys and the corresponding private keys sometimes you might have to import the cert certificate and private keys separately in an unencrypted plain text format to use it on another system this topic provides instructions on how to convert the pfx file to crt and key files so based off this we can convert our dot pfx file to a certificate file that has public keys and to a dot key file which has the corresponding private key right and so we can try these commands and we'll see what we get from there okay so i just got a new keyboard and it seems it does not have the curly swiggly thing and so i have to type the whole path and so we'll move that here and we can try open the file and convert it to a cert and a dot key file but as you can see we're going to need a password for that so you can try brute force this which is what we're going to do and we're going to use a tool called pfx to john it you might have it installed on your machine but if you don't we can go straight to github and download the file And we can w get that and we now have it inside our directory and let me warn you now this is a python 2 script so if you run it in python 3 it's not going to work so i will just activate my python 2 virtual environment and i will run python what was it called pi pfx to john okay and we have our search we'll convert that to a hash Okay, we have that and let's see what it looks like. So that's the hash and we're going to pass this to John to clear the screen. John hash. That's the wrong tag. Can I really type on this keyboard? I'm still not used to it. So user share. This is terrible. Word lists. RQ.txt. <laughs> I apologize for my terrible typing. I really do. And we will let that run. Okay, so it says no passwords left to crack because I already did that. So I'll do a tag tag show just to see the password. And we have a password. Right. So now we can try open that up again i'm too lazy to type so i will do this and we're gonna have an out file called key.pim paste in the password and as you can see we have our key.pim right we'll try that again but this time we want the certificate
password. Okay, so now we have a cert.pim and our key.pim. If you do your research and Googling and all that good jazz that you should do, you will find out pretty quickly that what we have to do is an attack called DNS poisoning. And I will just put up an article here. We can read just a bit and see what it actually is. I'll just make that bigger. Okay. So because I can start here, DNS cache poisoning is the act of entering false information into a DNS cache so that the DNS queries return an incorrect response and users are directed to the wrong websites. DNS cache poisoning is also known as DNS, also known as DNS spoofing. Sorry about that. IP addresses are the room numbers of the internet enabling web traffic to arrive in the right places. So attackers can poison DNS caches by impersonating DNS name servers making a request to a DNS resolver and then forging the reply when the DNS resolver queries a name server, right? This is possible because DNS servers use UDP instead of TCP and because currently there is no verification for DNS information. So quickly and um, through a bit more Googling and research, you will quickly find out that we need to use a tool called dig, copy back the IP address. So this is going to query the DNS server and we'll get back information and it includes the flag as well, right? And it gives us a hint says allowing non-secure dynamic updates is a significant security vulnerability because updates can be accepted from untrusted sources. What it's basically trying to say is that we can update the DNS cache and poison it with whatever we want to do, right? Even though we are not a part of the domain, that is the wincorp.thm. So we can delete some records, update the records. And by basically doing that, we can point the name server to us. So whoever visits, if a user visits this domain, they will be redirected to our web server and we can grab their hash. And to grab the hash, we're gonna be hosting a server with a responder and that's going to be an NTLM v2 hash. So we can try to set that up. So first, what we're going to need to do is move the certificates to responder. And for this, we are going to copy cert to user share responder certs. That's the first one. And that's not going to work because I'm not pseudo. And we can do that for the second one. It's called key.pim. Use a share responder certs. Now that we have that, we're going to need to update our responder.config. Use a share. Keep typing this, but it is what it is. Responder.config. And I, uh, I need to open that as a privileged user. Okay. And I don't want to download the current version. So what you need to do now is go to the bottom of your script and you're going to need to change Let me just type this out. Okay, as you can see in our search folder for responder, there's our cert.pfx, there's a crt.pim, which is ours, and then there's the key.pim. So you're gonna change this SSL cert to equal certs and crt.pim, which is our certificate. And then the SSL key will be the key.pim. So you're gonna have to save that out and you can close responder, but don't forget to change this back whatever it was when you're done because then if you're gonna try use responder again any other time it's not gonna work okay so clear out our screen here and we are going to use a tool called ns update to update their dns name servers and spoof them you know what i mean so what i need is the ip address which i keep forgetting 
so these are the commands server and that's this server and then we are going to update and delete what they currently have and we are going to delete the self service dot wincorp dot try hack me and we are going to send that request okay now we have sent that now we're going to update add self service dot wincorp dot thm and the port one two three four gonna put random a and then we're gonna make this point to our IP address which I do not currently know and I'm typing like a maniac okay that is our IP address I'm gonna exit out of that paste it here and we are going to send this okay so now that we have that we can query the DNS server again just to make sure we have that working and pointing to us and as you can see it is not pointing to us that did not work the first time because we're querying the wrong thing we're supposed to query self-service and make sure it's pointing to us and I have another typo in there Okay, and as you can see, it is pointing to our IP address. So once you have this set up, now we can fire up responder. If I can type the name, we can have our type capital IP and our interface. So this did not work for me at first. And the problem was that responder was not up to date. So if you have a problem with responder, I suggest you use your use Kali Linux it didn't work on Parrot for me and then I tried it on Kali and it also didn't work and then I had to update responder because it was having an error setting up a host on port 443 which is what we're supposed to have and so just update your system and update the tool and it's supposed to work we'll let it sit and hopefully in a couple of minutes or less we'll have a hash of one of the users that tries to visit self-service and instead of them going to soft service, they're going to be redirected to us and we're going to grab the hash. Okay, we'll be back when it runs. Hopefully for you, it worked. It took less time than it did for me the first time. And so we have a hash. We can just copy this and throw this into a hash file, crack it with hashcat or John. And we are going to use John on NTLM. And we are going to use word list equals user share word lists we are going to use rockq.txt i'll let that run okay so that took a bit of time if you have a faster cpu or gpu it'll work quicker but nonetheless we have credentials and so we will echo those credentials what's his name Ed Waddle, pretty uncommon name. We'll save that to creds. And now that we have credentials, it's pretty smooth sailing from here. We have that PowerShell script, PowerShell web access. We could try go to, and we also have SMB open. You could try WinRM into machine which is not going to work so we're just going to try partial web access which is probably the intended route i'm not too sure and here it is so our username is it waddle still pretty weird to pronounce computer name we could try fire.wincorp.thm hopefully that works come on sir give us access and we are in we are in you can try around who am i but i'm pretty sure you know your edward okay there we go. i really don't like this it takes a while to submit and i'll just rather have a normal shell i'm from here 
um, you can go into the desktop and you can find the flag, the second flag. But what I'm going to do is get a netcat shell. So what I have is my Windows folder that I have scripts to run. And I'm just going to run my server. I'll get my MP address from here. And what I want to do is transfer netcat so that I get a proper shell. So I am just going to use cert util live off the land if I can remember the syntax that's my IP address but I mistyped here and what we want is netcat.exe and we'll still call it netcat sir can you type no okay hopefully that works submit that see if we get a ping on our server and we did and we have netcat okay so now i need to clear my screen art of wrap okay yeah that is the syntax rather it just makes you have a prettier shell prettier window shell you can tab up for previous commands and i will run netcat E cmd .exe. what is my IP address okay we have it hopefully that works and we get a shell and we do who am I so the first things you need to do are your system enumeration and you can try run that but it's not gonna work as you can see it does not even want to be typed because we have denied access so apart from this, you can do your user enumeration. Who am I? Slash all. And from this, you can see that we have SE impersonate privilege enabled, right? So you can use your rotten potato, juicy potato, potato attacks in general. But I prefer using Prince Boofer. So I have an article I'm going to link in the description below that just gives up a lot more detail about the impersonate privilege All right you can read this you can get a lot more detail about what's going on but for now I'm just going to show you how to do it and what we need to do is download the prince boofer.exe and that will allow us to impersonate an administrator and run commands so i think i already have this do i yeah i already have this in my windows folder so i'm just gonna get it and hopefully we can copy that I can type the name thing. I'll just call print.exe. That was successful. And we have our print.exe. So the syntax for this is pretty easy. Like it's really easy. And what you just need to do. Firstly, I'll get another netcat I always forget the syntax of this thing and I'll reuse port 9001 this is my favorite port and the syntax for this is print .exe dash c and that is the command you want to run so usually people could add themselves as an administrator and whatnot but this is ctf so I'm just gonna get a shell as the root user and since we already have netcat.exe we can just use that to get our shell back and dash e cmd.exe what is my IP address I should memorize some of these things okay 
we have our IP address, port, and close that, and hopefully we get a shot. And boom, we do. Who am I? I am system, right? Yeah, this should be system. That is the name. Since we are Windows System 32 anyway, we could try see if we can go back. CD into C users. CD into administrator. CD into desktop. And we have the third flag. That is it for this room. I hope you enjoyed it. We will continue on to set next time. I'll catch you there.